16 AP Micro FRQ number one for today. Uh, let's see here. The market for bananas, muffins, and coffee are interrelated, and each market is perfectly competitive. In the market for bananas, the equilibrium price is $1 per pound, and the equilibrium quantity is 1,000 pounds per week. The government imposes a price floor on bananas at 120, causing the quantity supplied to increase to 1,500. So let's just start off by drawing this so we can make sense of it. Because all of those words don't make a lot of sense. But if we can see it on the graph, sometimes it helps. Here's my PE, it's $1 per pound. The quantity is 1,000 pounds. So let's just say 1K for 1,000. Suppose the government imposes a price floors. Now, we know that floors are high while ceilings are low. So when floors are high, we know we put in a price floor. And they do tell us at, it's at 120. So we know it's a binding or effective because it is above the equilibrium. It is high. Uh, we do have a quantity demand and the quantity supplied. And they tell us, I think, what the quantity supply increases to 1,500. So now, would the price floor result in a shortage, a surplus, or neither? Well, it looks like quantity supplied is greater than quantity demand, so that's definitely a surplus. And that's how we would explain it also. Quantity supplied is greater than quantity demand. Calculate the PES if the price increases from 1 to 120. So we know our formula for PES is a percentage change in quantity supplied over a percentage change in price. Looks like our price went from a dollar to a dollar twenty. So 20 cents of a dollar, which would be 20% there. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Our quantity demand went from 1,000 to 1 1.5. So 5 of 1 would be 50%. I think that's right. Um, you could have done this a little bit differently, I think. So that's that should give me 2.5. Remember, uh, PES uh, obviously is not going to give you a negative number because it's all positive there. So this would be elastic, supply elastic. Um, remember, el inelastic is anything less than 1, or between 0 and 1 is a better way to say it. Unit elastic is 1, and elastic is any PES value that is greater than 1. So greater than one would be elastic, and that's where we're at. We could also do this a little bit different if we had to. Our formula could be um, quantity demand. Oops, not quantity demand. Um, quantity, there we go. Quantity supplied. Notice the only difference between the two formulas is the S. So QS2 minus QS1 over... QS1, that works perfectly fine. And then P2 minus P1 over P1. If you can't do it in your head, and some of these I cannot do in my head, uh, I would just plug in the numbers. Obviously, QS went from, was 1.5 here, was 1,000 here, and the price, the P2 was 1.2, and the P1 was 1 over 1. So you could just do the math really quickly and figure those out. Um, we do not need to do it, I don't think. All right. And, of course, they could uh, force you to use the midpoint formula. College Board does not, will accept other formulas, this formula, um, or the QD2 minus QS1 over QS1. They'll accept that formula also. All right. Um, let's look here for number B. Draw a correctly labeled graph of the market for muffins indicating the price and quantity labeled POQO. Easy enough. Supply. POQO. All right. 
On the graph drawn in, part, drawn in part B, I show the impact of an increase in the price of bananas on the muffin market. So, bananas, they tell us, are an input for muffins. So, bananas are an input. And input prices, when they go up, uh, obviously supply decreases. So, the supply of muffins would decrease. Because we did draw... The market for muffins here. Make sure you keep track of. Here's muff muffins. The banana prices go up, therefore less muff banana muffins specifically are created. Um, t -t 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 P1 new price. P1. Q1. All right, easy. On the same graph, completely shade the area that represents the change in the consumer surplus. Now, remember, consumer surplus is everything above the price but below the demand curve. So originally, let's do it in a different color here so we can see it maybe. Maybe I can do a different color. Uh, let's use something bright here. Originally, I can't see that at all because I'm colorblind. Okay, let's use something different and then let's make it a little thicker maybe. Um, that didn't make it thicker at all, did it? How about that? That's passable. So originally that was our consumer surplus. And now, let's use a blue. Now this is our consumer surplus. Remember, everything above the price. So what we lost, I'm going to do it in black. I'm not sure the colors made. I'm not sure it made it. Our loss was this area here. Remember, if they're talking about a change, it's either what's been gained or what's been lost. So all of this shaded in area would have been the loss, if that makes sense. All right, uh, let's head on to C. In the market for coffee, the equilibrium price is $3 per cup, and the equilibrium quantity is 100. They're giving us the cross price elasticity is a negative 2. Now, knowing that cross price, or XCD, is a negative 2 lets me know immediately that they're complements. Um, we need to know that. Positive are substitutes, uh, negative are complements. So these are definitely complements. Um, oh, and we can answer it right here, complementary goods. Um, remember, you could have slotted out normal and inferior immediately because those have to do with YED, income. If income goes up, you consume more normal goods and less inferior goods. Mm, XED is complements and substitutes. Uh, all right, assume the supply of coffee is perfectly elastic. Let's draw that. Remember, perfectly elastic, the supply of coffee. Got it. Demand for coffee is downward sloping. Price, quantity. Use an equilibrium price and quantity. Give up, draw a correctly labeled graph of the coffee market. So this is coffee. Show the impact of an increase in the price of muffins. So if they are complements, um, what we know is that when the price of muffins goes up, that the demand for coffee will go down. Negatively related, that's where our negative number comes from, right? Muff price of muffins, demand for coffee. So we can shift our demand for coffee curve here. We do know they gave us some information in the beginning. It was $3 per cup. Let's put that there. Uh, we do know that the equilibrium quantity was 100. So let's do that right there. Now we can see we've lost some quantity. Um, given the original quantity of 100 cups of coffee per week, if the increase in the price of muffins is 10%, Calculate the new equilibrium quantity of market. This one is very confusing. Uh, the only one like this that I can remember. They did give us our XCD number, which was a negative 2. This is our XCD coefficient. We know that our formula for XCD is a percentage change in price under a percentage change in quantity demand. We do know this is supposed to be good A and good B, easy enough. Uh, they give us the percentage change in price of muffins. 
So we can put that in there. There was an increase there. To get a negative 2, obviously our quantity demand is going to have to go down. Uh, to get a 2, wouldn't it be have to be a 20% decrease? So 10 goes into 22, negative, easy enough. Um, so we need a 20% decrease. If our quantity demand right now is at 100, a 20% decrease would be 20% less, which would drop us down to 80 as our quantity demand at a price once our demand curve shifts there. Um, okay, I think that's right. Anything else? Anything else I'm missing? Nope, I think we're good. Um, all right, this one was got a lot of moving pieces, so sorry it's so sloppy. Keep working hard and um, moving toward break. Be safe, guys. Bye.